ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep, think bold, drive hard, watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com As entrepreneurs, we're hard charging, we're out there building tremendous value for our clients and our customers, building businesses that are extremely successful, that can support the quality of life that we want. That's our ideal goal. I gotta tell you, so many of us though make costly mistakes on our personal side, not on the business. Oftentimes we've got these great team members that are taking good care of us, but on our personal side, we're not achieving all the success that we want. And one of the things that I've seen so often as entrepreneurs, including myself, what I've always wanted is to have enough funds outside of my business so that I can have whatever life. It allows me to make great decisions about my business. And that's what this podcast is all about today. I'm John Bowen, and we're at AESNation.com, Accelerating Entrepreneurial Success. And today I have a very special guest, a very good friend of mine, one of my clients, a coaching client, who is one of the top financial advisors in the country. And you know, really what I've asked him to do is to share with us how we can be even more successful because we're all about accelerating success. So Jeff Powell, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, John. Yeah, for the magic of Skype, we're, we're together. Uh, although both of us are in Silicon Valley, it's one of the few that I could do. We could just race together here. But Jeff, you know, one, one of the things that I want to go, uh, you are an entrepreneur. You've been building a wealth management business for a number of years, and you've had some tremendous success. And, and I, I want to, you know, help me kind of understand and share with our viewers and listeners how this came about. What, where did this come from? Well, for me, it, it started 16 years ago, almost 17 years ago, and working in the financial industry, working for some very large name recognizable firms that later on made news for the wrong reasons. And for me personally, I really saw that there was a way for me to be able to really truly help my clients in an all encompassing way by going out and doing it myself. Yeah, and it's, and what, what is the difference? You know, and, and I've coached both, you know, large firms, small firms. The main thing we do is we coach top advisors, and Jeff is one of the top advisors. And Jeff, you know, how, how do you differentiate yourself in serving entrepreneurs? You know, what's the business look like? Yeah, well, we are an SEC registered registered investment advisory firm. We're a fee only advisor. So the clients that we sit down with, we're not charging them any commissions to to work with us. We're actually managing all money on a discretionary basis. But it's kind of getting a little ahead of ourselves. We're a wealth management firm, which means that we do all the planning and all the portfolio management all under one roof. My personal view is that you can't drive somewhere if you don't know where you are. So you need to know where you are, where you're trying to go in the future, and we really help them map that out so they can be successful on purpose. Well, and, and so when you, you talk about that, you know, you have a lot of very successful entrepreneurs as clients. Help me understand, you know, where you see entrepreneurs making costly mistakes. It's a great question. You know, it, I think that this is one of the cobbler not showing their own children's feet, so to speak. Really, entrepreneurs are very successful. Uh, the, the successful entrepreneurs that we are working with are successful for a reason, and they are concentrating uh, an exorbitant amount of their time on their business and not necessarily on themselves. So they are the doctor being the worst patient. They're not actually looking at their own finances. They may do business planning, but they're not actually doing planning for their own financial future. And oftentimes, by ignoring those things, they're costing themselves thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars by not actually making uh, smart decisions with their own finances. Yeah, and, and where do you see, you know, what are some of the, I mean, and I've seen this over and over again too, and, you know, it's, and, it, and it's not only the dollar amounts, because the dollar amounts you can live through, but where the problem is, is that it, the impact it can have on the family and on the business when you make these costly mistakes. But what are some of the mistakes that you're seeing uh, entrepreneurs do? Are there, are there some general ones? Yeah, you know, I mean, we get involved in, in really four areas of someone's financial life. We get involved, well, obviously, with the asset management, but we also get involved with legacy management, 
risk management, and debt management. All four are very much interlinked together, sort of dovetailed together. And a mistake in one area, as you just sort of mentioned, John, can really be costly, and especially for someone's family. One very common thing amongst all the entrepreneurs that we work with, they're, they're very family oriented. They're really looking at the legacy that they're dealing with and making sure that their hard work actually does transfer onto the next generation. So for us, we want to get involved with all of them. And in essence, what we're doing is we're being interviewed and, and we're hired to be someone's personal chief financial officer. Well, and it's, I want to go to that because I think this is really important is that so often uh, what I see is entrepreneurs, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are so busy as I started with a doing it, doing it, doing it type thing that we don't make the time, as you said, Jeff, to actually put plans in order. And it, and it gets worse than that because what we don't do is we don't also have the team around us to execute. And that's why I've always loved the concept of the personal chief financial officer. It's, a, it's an amazing thing because you know they're the CEO of their business oftentimes when we're talking about an entrepreneur or certainly the owner, but they're also the CEO of the family unit. And, and while, while we have off, you know, most people have some type of CFO in the business, they don't have anybody there that's a sounding board to, to help them get organized. I mean, when you see a personal CFO work well with an entrepreneur, what's that look like? Well, it's a great question. I mean, and what we're doing, again, you know, is hitting on those four areas. But, you know, oftentimes what you're seeing in the mistakes here is someone might have a, a really you know, poor mortgage or they might have, uh, improper life insurance. This person, this entrepreneur, is turning to someone like me and really delegating down that responsibility to make sure that everything that they're doing in their financial life is all cohesive and it's all moving them towards their long-term financial uh, goals. Yeah, and, and what I, I mean, it's one of the challenges we have when we're running so hard is we want to make smart decisions, but if we don't have, you know, we don't make the time to have someone that we can bounce off what we want to accomplish and that actually understands not only the financial market but has a team of experts to actually you know make sure all the areas the four areas that jeff talked about that they're working in concert you know we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment absolutely correct and i mean and realistically speaking you know, we are not compensated for anything else other than the asset management. And the reason why we get involved with the other three categories that we've talked about is that we feel like it's so important. I mean, a, a mistake in estate planning can really hurt the next generation. Uh, you know, being you know, involved in the wrong insurance or having a mortgage that skyrockets in the future could have an absolutely detrimental long-term effect on, on their overall portfolio management. And, and that's the reason why we get involved. So how, how would someone, whether they're working with you or another personal chief financial officer, how, how, what's kind of the process, Jeff, that you take an entrepreneur through to really think through this? Because, you know, I mean, you and I are both entrepreneurs. You know, before we started the podcast, we were both talking about how hard we're running. And we've got a number yeah. of things we've got to do and life intruding, you know, on personal sides, it demands time and attention. You know, this is kind of the stuff that gets put on the side because we're not sure as entrepreneurs how we can get our financial affairs in order and we'll do it someday. Yeah. How could they well, do it now and how would it work? Well, we, we have anybody that's interested in working with us go through a three-step process with us. Uh, it's absolutely imperative for them to go through this process in order for them to truly have an understanding of if we're bringing value to that table or not. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if somebody is going to delegate this, if they're going to hire a, a personal chief financial officer, it has to come with some value to it. So our first meeting we call a discovery meeting. It's a get to know you meeting. We want to understand who they are, where they are, what they're trying to accomplish, and really over what kind of time period. If they don't understand themselves, if they're not completely clear, we help guide them through that. And at the very worst, we put hypotheticals in place so that they at least have something to strive for. Our second meeting, we call our investment plan meeting. And, and really in this meeting, we are here to show them what they're doing well and what they could do to improve upon things. For us personally, we choose to not have any obligation or any cost to take these first two steps. And if somebody doesn't really see true value in what we, should, or we are doing, then we're not the right fit. But in most cases, people will see what they're doing incorrectly and, and realize that the value of having a chief personal financial officer or personal chief financial officer is really an exceptional value. Yeah, one of the things too, Jeff, that I, I love that you do 
is, you know, it's hard for any one of us to be an expert at everything. I mean, the, the reality is the world's complicated. And when we talk about personal finance, and much like corporate finance, there's a lot of different issues. One of the things I'm most impressed is how you uh, work with a team of experts and bring that together, those resources, as you're exploring, you know, the possibility of working together. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it would be a, a very arrogant thing for for one person to sit there and claim that they had an expertise in, in all four of those categories, as we've already been discussing. What we do is we try to play nicely in the sandbox with the, our clients and their current advisors if they already have them. But as we've already discussed, in most cases, because the entrepreneurs that we're working with are running so fast, that they are so dedicated to their own businesses, that there's often you know, huge gaps in, in the trusted advisors that they're working with. And for those types of people, we have put together strategic relationships with the very top estate planning attorneys, the very top CPAs, the very top insurance people and mortgage brokers to make sure that if the entrepreneur needs help in a specific area, that we're bringing them the very best. No, that's great. And you know what I want to do, Jeff? I want to go switch now from the personal CFO hat to the entrepreneur hat. And very few advisors have enjoyed the success that you do, but also that you've expanded to multiple locations and so on. What was the uh, big breakthrough? You know, I, I think the big breakthrough for me was really gaining enough size to be able to delegate responsibilities. So for, for any firm, you need, you need to be able to take time out to work on your business not necessarily in your business. And actually, not to throw out too much credit to uh, to the coaching that you all, uh, you've helped me very much in, in that process. And to be able to take an all-encompassing view, to be able to put the client first, to be in a, a position of being that trusted advisor, of growing our firm, really every year that we've been in existence over the last 17 years, uh, has put us in a position of being able to have more and more advisors out in the field, doing more and more good things for people that need help. No, that's that's great, and it's it's really providing you know a lot of value, uh, you know, consistently. I mean, that's what the market, you know, as entrepreneurs, what we know is that if we can deliver value to our clients, then we do well. And I mean, this is whether you're selling widgets, whether you're selling you know uh, professional services, whether it is intellectual property, that high tech solution, whatever it is. By delivering value, I mean, the market is just amazing at how well this all comes together. And, and you know, you've done a great job with that, Jeff. Well, thank you. Well, you know, I mean, well, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, uh, in this business, we're not here to try to sell something. We're here to actually solve problems. And what I normally try to explain to somebody who's interested in the possibility of working with this is think about the last car that they, they purchased. Was it sold to them or did they buy it? A really good advisor is going to be able to find value for you and then give you the opportunity to think about does this make sense for you or not, to not try to sell you something, but to be in a position of being that trusted advisor. When somebody sees that, they typically don't need long to think about it, but at least we're providing them a very low-key situation where they're making the decision and they're not being sold something. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's a great analogy and it's very powerful. Now, I want to switch to keep you on the entrepreneur for a second. And as you're building a business, as you scale up a business, and you've been doing that for a number of years now, I want you to think about a key element. The complication of the day. So what is, Jeff, what, what is something you want to share with your fellow entrepreneurs that would be you know, a great tool that you're using? Uh, uh, on apps for uh, for technology, we yeah. are very very high on Salesforce. Uh, for us, we're very very process driven. Uh, again, talking about being successful on purpose. How can you be successful without a process? How can you be successful without having a repeatable experience for your end client? And Salesforce for us really allows for us to be able to provide the same client experience if you're meeting with us in person. If you're doing a Skype interview like you're doing now, WebEx over the phone, or somebody in a different city that we, we have uh, boots on the ground in a couple other cities. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I, Salesforce is one in my mind. And it's, you know, the, not only is it a, it's a pretty good tool, but it's also so integrated with so many other tools that they've done just a phenomenal job. 
Jeff, let me get a little background for you. The passion that you bring, okay, not only to what you're doing, but what are you passionate about doing going forward? You know, I think the thing uh, that I enjoy more than anything else is just knowing that we're making a difference in people's lives. We just gave a client appreciation event for local clients. We had over 100 clients show up to a restaurant and did a very nice dinner event with them. And over and over and over again, the response was just, uh, it was overwhelming. And, and that's really what gets me up in the morning every single day is knowing that what we do, while it might seem commonplace, and many people talk a great game about actually performing wealth management, it's a great buzzword, but so few firms out there actually truly perform wealth management services that they get that involved in people's lives. So for us, knowing that impact, taking unfortunately people through their entire lives and then talking with the next generation and helping that next generation in that process, to me it's, it's absolutely one of the most rewarding things that we can possibly do is to really help people's long-term dreams come true. Okay, well let's, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, one of the things I love about getting together with clients that you're making a big difference is just the energy in the room. And, you know, they, they're so appreciative and you are making a difference. Now, I want you to make a difference with our, our community here. And so I want you to share with me what we call the Entrepreneur Insight of the Day. And so what's the one idea you want to share with your fellow entrepreneurs that's going to help them accelerate their success going forward? I think that where my success really started to accelerate is when I really started to learn to delegate. You know, when I started to take a step back and realize that there were a lot of other people surrounding me, wonderful people surrounding me, that could actually do a better job when only wearing one hat versus me being strained to try to do everything. For me, the one takeaway that I would throw out to your entrepreneurs is really strongly consider hiring a chief or a personal chief financial officer, be it my firm or other firms that, uh, that you all work with. By delegating that responsibility down, you can have somebody that is full time dedicated to your personal finances. If you really think about it, I mean, think about a golfer. If you're a golfer and you read golf magazine, you may watch golf on TV and you may go to the driving range every once in a while and maybe you play every Sunday. But realistically, you're never going to do as well as a professional golfer that's out there every single day hitting thousands of balls. I'm doing this full time every day. I have a staff of 15 people helping me do this every single day. Think about yourself individually trying to do what I'm doing in that same context. It's just not a fair comparison. So my takeaway, what I would say to the entrepreneur, delegation. Now, this is great. Let me go over what we call the key takeaway segment and see what your thoughts are here. Okay. What I have, uh, the three that jump out at me is, number one, stop making costly mistakes in your personal affairs by engaging a personal CFO. And this is one that I, I've just seen the benefit over and over again because my role both in the financial services industry and as an entrepreneur, you know, we've, it's not so much trying to hit it out of the park, it's to keep from doing dumb things. So that's number one, a personal CFO. Second, Jeff, one of the things that I know, I know you and you've shared this here is that as we talked, you have clear processes you, know, you frame the conversation, you provide the process. And boy, once you get clear processes and make sure you're delivering great value, this is amazing because all of a sudden now you have the ability to use the technology like Salesforce and other tools to make sure it's delivered consistently. So I, you know, for all our you know, AES Nation members, I mean, this is so important for you to think through what is a process and then to build that technology, you know, to incorporate it. And the third part, uh, Jeff, you finished on the inside of the day, and I, I just want to go over it one more time, is the delegation. Delegation is just so critical because what happens is that, you know, you wouldn't get to the point where you are today without delegating something. The flow, you know, of information, the flow of requests for you, the time and energy, it's increasing even more dramatically. 
So what we want to be is more creative on the delegation and really separate out our business life and our personal life and take responsibilities for both so that we can achieve success. So personal CFO, number one, number two, process, and number three, delegation. Jeff, did I get the key takeaways? I, I think that's absolutely correct. So let's, let's jump into the next segment, which is resources. And Jeff, I pulled up your website. One of the things I'm going to encourage everybody to do is uh, join, uh, you know, just come to the website. It's polariswealth.net. You can see it there. And what I'd love to have you do, because I know I'm on your newsletter list, is to go ahead and, uh, you know, join and just get the commentary uh, that you can see. And uh, Jeff, any other uh, thing on the resources at your website? Well, I, I do think that wealth management sometimes can be confusing to some people to truly understand. And, and on our website, on the front page of our website is a corporate video, two minute video, not very long, not very difficult to go through. And it actually puts it really in English, what wealth management is. So if, if you want to learn more about what wealth management is, that's a great resource for you to go as well. No, this is great, Jeff. And one of the things that we do at AES Nation, Accelerating Entrepreneurial Success, is it will make available at AESNation.com the transcript of our uh, time together, as well as Jeff and I talked about uh, several links, uh, access to information. You can go there and get that information, as well as other insights for entrepreneurs. Jeff, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day joining us and sharing some of your insights, your hard-learned insight, helping entrepreneurs make smart decisions about their money. Well, John, thank you for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure. And, you know, as you already said, I would you know, reiterate, just you know, reach out for, for help. It's what this whole process, this is what the, the entire event is all about, is, is seeking out the right people to help you. Yeah, and, and, and it's, boy, by doing that, you know, you will make a difference. It's gonna allow you to be more really focused on your business and know it's taken care of. And at the same time, I gotta tell you, your family, your employees, your teammates, your clients and customers, they're gonna be really happy with it. So let's go out and make that commitment to make a difference and take care of both the personal and business. Thanks again, Jeff. Thank you.